All right, welcome everybody. Uh, 14th of November, Merligay's Open Source Antibiotics meeting. Um, as usual, there is a, uh, the agenda online. We, we picked up a lot of legacy issues um, and that's that's my bad and you hang bad because we need to be triaging down this enormous list of stuff that people said they'd do. We'll get around to that at some point. But again, there are some just some key things that I think we can talk about today. Um, and uh, I mean, chief amongst those, uh, I, th I think we should start, if everyone's okay, with the um, microbiology stuff. So the measurements of yeah. um, the multi-targeting compounds that we are interested in, that Adrian has been measuring against the um, in vitro against the enzymes, uh, and their potential ability to do something to the bacteria. Um, so... if it's, if it's, is it okay to present that? I don't have the data yet because uh, Jenny couldn't uh, make the table. Um, she was very busy in the lab. So, um, but she told me that we got potency of 64 uh, macarons um, in uh, E. coli. Uh, and there are other, so it's hitting other um, bacteria. I think it was acetinobacter, if I remember correctly. Uh, but we will have a, a table. In the next couple of days, is testing Acetylobacter, Pseudomonas, uh, E. coli, um, Klebsiella, and other organisms that Chris added last Friday. So right. yeah, we're trying to get as many as we can. Uh, there is some more. The, the strongest potency was against E. coli, but is uh, hitting other targets as well. All right, that's awesome. So I mean, so who's doing the measurement? Sorry, uh, Jenny Leiter. She joined the AMR facilities in the lab last okay. year all right well i mean thanks to her first <laughs> okay. yeah i asked her if she wanted to join but uh, she's quite busy today so <laughs> no fine just yeah. really great to get the data at short notice you know yes um, yes and um i mean obviously that's great do we have a um do we have a negative right so do we have a member of the mall of that family that doesn't do very well that isn't giving any activity just for extra i think you would say them on us Okay, I mean, a compound that isn't hitting. Oh, the alpha compound. No, all of the compounds seem to be hitting, but there are three that seem to be more potent than the rest. Okay, all right. Uh, I mean, if if we're able to take a compound that has performed badly mm -hmm. in in Adrian's assays, you know, um, and if that was ineffective against the bacteria, that would just be nice. Yes, we can try that as well. Okay, well, would we have a number of those? Right? Yeah, you, you need a positive. There are plenty people. of uh, negative ones, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe's saying about a positive as well. Do, I mean, is there a positive? No, no, no. You need you, you need to go against the mammalian cell. Oh yeah. Okay, so I assume that that is part of the portfolio that you guys have in your microbiology team. But you need to be testing the compounds against a mammalian cell to see is there some generic toxicity. Yes, I just don't know if there's going to be time for the deadline of this first um, application. Uh, because we need to grow the cells and they haven't grown. Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm just saying that, okay, if you, if you want to put a grant application in and you're showing MICs, you need, you, you, you need to be showing something against human cells. Selectivity. Yeah. 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 In terms of Matt's talking about putting a grant application in, yes, that should be that should be a priority. You know, again, the, these teams. Yes, but um, so the okay. mammalian work was not established in the lab yet. Like while um, Jenny, in between changing from John to Jenny, right? So we just ordered some cells, and we just waiting for the cells to arrive. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, of course, it's essential. This is um, this is an EOI, so it, and it's actually remarkably brief, the form that you have to put in. Um, we'll see. Uh, is yeah, just wondering if there's another way of, another quicker way of doing that. I can't remember when the EOI deadline is. It's like ten days, right? Twenty fourth. The twenty fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's, yeah, let's. We yeah, I'll try to get this shorter with her. Right, um, we know that you want the compounds. We've we found them, so we didn't ship the whole thing. And yeah, they're being handled. Thank in you. Yi Wei's been in touch with Yu Hang, and I think Gi is going to ship them. Is that all right? Okay, so I think we That'd have the ones we want. Yeah, yeah, we'll try to start the this week. Yeah. Thank you. That'll be brilliant. Yeah. 
<laughs> just to make sure we can screen everything. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, you know, we can generate more um, if mm -hmm. uh, if and when. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we, we'll we'll need it for IC fifty work and uh, other types of uh, enzymatic advertisation as well. Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, very exciting. With with caveats, very exciting. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is an EOI. The PACE scheme is an EOI, and we would obviously want to um, flesh out a full proposal if we're successful, but we'll we'll try and get this through. Yep. Um, all right. I mean, uh, the the other two things, uh, which are uh, key importance, what, one, again, Lara on crystallography and Adrian and any any new data you might have generated since the last meeting. I guess I just want to cover those two basic things because they're, they're still the key things. So last week I sent 112 crystals. Wow. Yeah. Um, they include co soaking co-crystals, soaking with uh, together, so soaking first with ATP and ATP analogs and the substrates, and then soaking with the compounds. I did like a different results on different experiments around that um, area for E. coli and UC, D and E. Um, now, uh, I have not been able to test it yet because the main ring at Diamond was not working. So they gave me time on Thursday at 10 p.m. if everything works okay, like if everything goes well. I'm waiting for an update today on how the ring is doing and if Wednesday might be possible. Uh, sorry, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, yeah, I'm fingers crossed I can test them soon because I mm. can't wait to see what happened <laughs> with those things. And we also talked to some people at Diamond and we are also going to do other crystallography experiments uh, with uh, run the belt and real time crystallography and see if we can at least understand what's going on with the crystals and maybe try to optimize things in a different way or even use those pl platforms to see the compounds binding because if the compounds have a really fast K off, that might be the problem. We don't know. So we're just going to try to see if that's, um, yeah, if that's the issue and if all those new techniques help. Okay, awesome. Um, and which compounds have you included there? So I included all the, um, the last hits of the enamine library, right. follow-ups, and then the um, yeah, atom wise, like these OSA compounds that we are testing on the microbiology as well. Mm. Uh, all the hits that we got okay. from the essays, basically. All right. Yeah, and then I'll do another run. Well, now I wanted to do it before the end of the year, but with the beam, <laughs> I don't know if I'll, there will be time. Um, but I want to do, uh, I've got some compounds from Kato, some follow-up compounds that I needed to do some soaking. So that's uh, going to go in the next round, most probably. Let's see if we get the structures that we need now, and because that's a priority. Great, great. All right, great, fantastic. Any queries from anyone? But while we're talking about crystallography, were there anything that uh, is happening over with you? Uh, you're muted. Yeah. Uh, there hasn't been any recent uh, crystallization updates. Uh, would they have received the Pseudomonas and Acinidobacter, and they're also trying with the E. coli with JO6. Yeah. Um, besides that, I saw on the list I was supposed to set up a meeting, which I didn't do, and apologize. And so I will do that. You guys should yeah. see an email email from me today um, cool. to try to try to do that. Um, just it would help a little, Laura and Joe, for availability. You know, next not next week, but maybe the week after, and then times you know since it's 6 a.m here i'd prefer like you might get more maybe two hours from now so is that time good it's for you fine with me i'm just checking the calendar if i have anything that i can't uh yeah that's fine any any day any time <laughs> yeah it's fine so just uh, i i realized last night so i sent a note to scott an email to scott last night at like 10 o'clock my time. Uh -huh. He needs to be at he should be added to the to the to the meeting list. He's not on the meeting list. Oh man, okay. That's my bad. So I sent him a note, but I mean again it was it's early in the morning here. It's seven AM for him and uh mm -hmm. he got it at ten o'clock last night. So 
not surprising he didn't join at this point. Right. We will fix that. Sorry. Okay, thanks. All right, so action on you, Bart, to set up a meeting. Great. Okay, um, and then I guess I wanted to just to come to Adrian in case there are any updates you would want to share with us. Well, yes. So um, in because we've had a shortage of atomized compounds, but also because we've had a student working with us over the summer uh, from Dundee, a guy called Henry Way, um, what we... Did we progressed the work that I I mentioned a, a few meetings ago about uh, using um, diadenosine polyphosphates or mixed nucleoside polyphosphates and looking at their impacts upon the MO ligase pathway. Now I've got to present the data properly, but what I have done, I've put together one salient slide which I'm going to share if that's okay. Great. Okay, if I can find it. Okay, so right, if everyone can see this, so yeah, basically, uh, you're looking at just six IC fifties. The top three um, are basically um, against um, uh, a uridine with four phosphates and an adenosine at the end, so UP4A. Can you, and sorry, Adrian, can you just, can you, any chance you can enter presentation mode just to make it a bit bigger? Certainly, sorry, big one. Okay. There you go, great. All right, okay. So, the top three IC50s of us, uh, of us are against a compound called UP4A, which is uridine tetraphosphoadenosine. So the idea behind using this compound is that you have a uracil at one end, you have an, an adenine at the other, you have a length in between, which unfortunately happens to be tetraphosphate. But the logic behind this was to wonder whether you could actually take out merligase activity by simultaneously taking out the the um, uridine and uh, adenosine substrate binding sites. So with MER-E, and it is specifically mer -E that appears to be a sucker for this, uh, we're getting IC50s in the region of uh, 11 to 18 micromolar, <clears throat> 18 micromolar uh, depending upon what the competing substrate is. Um, if we repeat it with uh, the um, AP4A, so you have aden uh, adenosine at both ends instead, uh, your IC50 is a height over, <clears throat> over tenfold. So there appears to be specificity for this. We've also um, looked at the other um, enzymes in the pathway as well, and there appears to be um, a pattern where uh, mer -E is the far more sensitive than any of the other ligases to, to this particular length uh, of um, this nucleoside. Um, and so what we've done, we've, we've crunched all the numbers and I'll present the data next time, but there does appear to be uh, a large amount of sensitivity uh, by MER-E to this type of molecule. And I'm wondering whether if we can change the distance between the uridine and the adenosine nucleosides, you would actually get uh, specificity for the other mer ligases as well. So um, we've tried co-crystallizing things, and I think that's still in progress. And um, that's where we are. So when we're not doing atom-wise or enemy, this is what we're doing, amongst other things. Where do these molecules come from? What's the origin? They're commercially available. Uh, no, but I mean, why did you choose to test them? Well, UP4A simply because you have the possibility of target, simultaneously targeting the ATP binding site and the, the UDP substrate binding site. Mm -hmm. um, and um, AP4A, I just basically put in as, if you like, a control. Um, and the logic is, if you think about it, as each step for the addition of amino acid goes on C, D, E, and F, 
in principle, the distance between the ATP binding site and the uridine binding site increases because the, the uh, ATP phosphorylates at the end of the increasing length of the peptide chain as you go along the pathway. Right. Um, so essentially, this is basically probing that type of um, characteristic. Right. And the phosphates are just a spacer, do you think? Yes. Well, that that's that's my hypothesis at the moment. So if we can find something uh, which resembles that, uh, which has something a little more drug-like in between them, um, it might be a, an interesting Friday afternoon experiment. Yeah. Wow. And those are commercially available. Okay. And I'm assuming there is not some commercially available variant with a little peg linker between the the two ends, right? I don't know, is the honest answer. Um, but it's certainly worth looking. Hmm. Right, there we go. Great, thank you. Interesting. Yeah. Any, any queries? Thanks for that. Could be a new thing. Hmm. All right, um, uh, Guy, did you want to talk about what you're doing? I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot at all, but um, you know, did you want to say anything about your your current design and? So, what you're sorry, thinking? I just want to. Sorry, yeah. Greg, I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was on mute. So I just um want to make one more pitch to Adrian. So we got compounds from AstraZeneca, which we got crystal structures of, and AstraZeneca is still waiting for us to kind of get back with them, and part of that would be to actually test the AstraZeneca compounds we received in the various mirror ligases beyond mirror C. And so this is a standing request since basically April. So it would be great if you could actually find time to do that because again, we were given, you know, by AstraZeneca these compounds and out of their kindness and we should follow up the way you know they're expecting us to. So it would be great to, if we could somehow find time to test those compounds in the various mirror ligases. Okay. So please. The, please. So certainly. The, these are related to Johan's Mercy direct yeah. molecules, yeah, which- no, Yes, uh, yes and no, yes and no. I'm, yes, yes and no. I mean, we received compounds from AstraZeneca. I think we received three compounds, which they went, and Bart and his team did crystallography on those. Okay, we have crystal structures, but we've never gotten data. I think there was percent inhibition data, which I've shared, uh, Laura had compiled and I've shared a couple of times where they were showing some inhibition against uh, some mirror like ACEs other than mirror C. So it just like I said, it was just, it's a matter of getting the IC50s of those compounds. I think there's like three of them. So. Okay. Just again, I'm just please asking, you know, I, I happen to be actually doing some consulting at the AstraZeneca site, not with AstraZeneca, with a different company. And I know, like, for example, Pam Hill, who was the person at AstraZeneca who really helped us get these compounds. So it'd be nice to be able to. And I think they've been I think. I think Chris has received inquiries from AstraZeneca asking about what's the status of the compound. So, it's, again, it's just. We ought to try to close this part of it. Okay. And I know it's exciting about, you know, the atomized compounds and maybe, maybe, or maybe not the enamine compounds, but we should just finish up the AstraZeneca compounds we received from them. Thank you. Okay. So the reason I mentioned Yuhang's compounds is I sent Yuhang, I think, an email this week uh, because one of the things that's critical for that is timing, apparently, because of their reactivity. So I'm a try in the process of trying to arrange a date for that. So when I do that, I can also put in uh, the acid compounds as well in the same set of assays. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. <clears throat> yeah, the, the complication there, uh, Yuhang just needs to reply to you in that case about, about the timing. So the, the complication there is that the compounds are being purified by PrEP LC, and we had a, a whole deal of, of trying to make the prep work properly when one of them is purified adequately will uh, you will be able to give you a better idea of exactly when the compounds are arriving 
um, hopefully before Christmas, right? That's the idea. But but we we, we it's difficult to predict until we purified one with the new prep LC method. So he'll uh, he'll be in touch about about that. Okay. Well, maybe the thing to do then is just to get on with the Eze compounds and new Hangs compounds when they turn up. Yeah, I mean the the important thing is to is that you know ideally we want them yeah screened yep. immediately after synthesis on just in case they degrade because they they involve primary amines and uh, so yeah that's that's the reason for coordinating things well um, yeah. but you can look healthy when I'm done. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean there to, there is I... ultimately a publication here mm -hmm. if yep. if we get this data so <laughs> yeah agreed. Yeah, Joe, I appreciate the the nudge. I have an email from I think a Kelly Gray who's uh, wants an update on that. Yes, yes, he's the one. That's I mean, just... again, we 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 went through a, a lot of effort, mm -hmm. both for you and and Chris Dawson at Warwick, getting everything through to get these compounds. And so, you know, AZ has this open innovation, and they, you know, which is a great thing. You know, that pharma provides these opportunities to academic groups to get access to compounds. And so really it's on us to, to do our part. All right. So I think we'll be able to schedule those pretty, pretty soon. I'll make sure it stays on the uh, agenda in case it's, yeah. it's just chasing up a, um, I'm sure we have an AstraZeneca open innovation event at UCL coming up. And um, if we do, I'll, I'll mention this. Um, all right. Thanks for that nice joke. Um, yeah, just to come back to Guy, if you, I, I did, if you wanted to just share an outline, the kind of stuff you've been doing, Guy, just to keep everyone updated, because it's relevant to the atomized compendium. Yeah, I mean, I haven't prepared any, no, uh, that's slide not... any presentation. I can, I put on my, my schedule, I'll present, uh, uh, the next week, next month. Right. I'll prepare that's like, awesome. I'll, I'll just a few slides just to, uh, keep everyone on the loop. What I'm right. Going right. To do, yeah. yeah. So, um. Just in outline, Guy is looking at the the ortholibus TB enzymes. So there's lots of overlap here. And uh, yeah, okay, great. If you could give a, a slide or two next time, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, for sure, yeah. All right, great. Those are the the key things for us. Um, you Hang and I are working hard on just polishing up the CC4 carb proposal, which is really nearly ready to go now. It just uh, we just find, sometimes find it difficult to sit down at the same desk and and finish off some of the schemes, but that'll be going in soon for chemistry on the AZ side of things on the on that side of the project. So in terms of trying to get more resources to that, to try and get some chemistry on that side of things, and and this pace expression of interest on on the other side of things. Um, I'm sure we can be doing more, but at the moment, that's our bandwidth, I think. All right. Anything else anyone wants to mention? Because I think those are the key things. Yeah. So Lori is not on the call today, as far as uh -huh. I can tell. Um, she's put out requests several times about whether to follow up on the R21. Um, so that that's the NIH grant that was submitted earlier this year. Um, was not reviewed. Um, I think Lori had sent out a note about some of the key comments, feedback from the reviewers about what, you know, maybe we should address. Um, so I don't know. I mean, one of the things is, you know, I guess you should think about um, possibly, I, I have to say I'm still a little skeptical about the atom wise compounds, but if you have good data for atom wise compounds, you might want to be thinking about using the atom wise compounds if you're getting you know some better data and, and, and more uh, broad spectrum activity and you actually get some wild type MICs. Um, so I don't know like Laura mentioned E. coli. I don't know if that's a if it's a tool C or wild type E. coli. But anyway I think He's wild type. Yeah. Okay. Again, so I think uh, you might think might consider you know, for the R21, again, if you're trying to look at various funding sources for the project, you might think about going back on the R to the R21 uh, if you have this good data for atomized compounds. I will just emphasize again, if you're going back to the NIH on the R21, uh, if you have MICs, you need to have the mammalian data. Um, yeah. any, 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 any reviewer worth their salt in this space is going to know you know, this is a standard thing that you need to have some level of, of toxicity profile of the compounds. So anyway, but it's just, just to kind of help Lori out here. So again, I think she was looking to try to decide what you guys wanted to do about uh, whether to resubmit an R21 or not. 
or that. I don't remember that email about the referee comments, but I can try and dig it up. I, I didn't realize that the um, that the idea would be to revise and resubmit. Um, if so, yeah, I mean, I was really interested. We want to make sure we're not double dipping, but I'm sure there's plenty of space. I wouldn't wor too worry about getting successful in two different grants, but if that comes, I mean, there's there's diff different ways to, to do that. So I wouldn't worry about that too much, Matt. They're like buses, you know, grants come in twos, right? Really? <laughs> I must be a UK. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I'll dig it up. Yeah, but if Laurie wants something specific and if something's fallen off our email inboxes, then uh, please ask her just to to, to um, hassle us about that because you're yeah, obviously really happy to help her lead something. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thanks. Bye. Or thanks. All right. No, bye, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything else? I think everything else can wait for the moment probably. Yeah. I will update you as soon as I awesome. get yeah. the crystals. <laughs> right, great. And if there's, I mean, if there's any, if the, if the, yeah, the mammalian tox is going to be tricky. If there's any other way we can get that done quickly, um, that would be. I'll, I'll look into it. I just, uh, yeah. I just email Jenny about it. So. Okay, all right. Yeah. Just I, to I don't up think, on that. Yeah, I mean, we can do it here, but I don't think we can beat you probably. I don't think we can be faster. So, yeah. so the standard, I think the standard one a lot of people use are Hep G two cells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, those are the ones that we were getting. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think that someone at Warwick somewhere in Warwick given. Yeah, it's just that we wanted. Sciences, that someone would have. It's a yeah, it's her. just we wanted something that we knew it was not contaminated, right? Because mm -hmm. there there was a recent but really bad contamination in the TC room, uh, ah. and everyone uses that room in the department. So yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah, so we are trying bloody, to be uh, careful. Right. Right. Yep. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you. I'll update you. Fantastic. All right. Thanks for coming along, everybody. Great to see you. See you next time. No no. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.